Hello dear friends, peace be with you. Every great religion in this world has something in common with Christianity. Keeping aside the philosophical and theological differences, there is one thing which makes Christianity stand apart. It is the fact that it proposes a God who is constantly in search of lost souls and leading them to the way of salvation. As we see in Luke chapter 15, we have the parable of the lost sheep, lost coin and the wonderfully narrated story of the prodigal sons. All these three parables clearly state the fact that it is God who is constantly coming in search of us and saving us with His loving grace. I am sure all of you know about this famous Christian hymn, Amazing Grace, which is sung by millions of people all over the world. It was written by John Newton, an Anglican clergyman who was a slave trader before. He expresses his encounter with Jesus with these lines in the song. I was once lost, but now I am found, was blind and now I see. Yes, today I'm going to introduce to you a person who was once lost and was eventually found by Jesus. She's none other than the famous Indian actress Mohini Christina, who from a staunch Brahmin background shares her journey to the fullness of her Catholic faith. She's presently staying in Seattle, Washington and is married to Bharat with two children. So I invite all of you to join me in this wonderful conversation with Mohini Christina. Thank you and God bless. Yeah. Yeah, you can start uh, Christina. Just a brief uh, ba background about your family. Um, so my real name is uh, Mahalakshmi Srinivasan and uh, I belong to a Tanjore Brahmin family. My father is from Mannargudi and my mother is from proper Tanjore. Her mother is from Kotem. Uh, so uh, we've been generations together Brahmins. Okay. As long as I can reach, we have been Brahmins. And um, the interesting fact is I would be the first Christian in the entire generation, okay. which I really thank the Lord. Ah. And um, I got married to Bharat Krishnaswamy. Uh, Bharat is working in HCL in the USA. And uh, he belongs to a Palkar Brahmin family. So ours was half and half marriage. Uh, love and arranged. Okay. So we arranged to fall in love, and they arranged for us <laughs> to get married. <laughs> so, um, and we have two children, wonderful children, gift of God. Yeah. Um, uh, my older one's name is Anirudh Michael Bharat, and my little one's name is Advait Gabriel Bharat. Sixteen and six. So me and Bharat, we contemplated for 10 years whether we need to have a Bharat. second child or okay. not. Mm, so this is my small little cute family. I have a brother. Bharat has a younger sister. I have a younger brother. Okay. So in one of the interviews that I heard, uh, Christina, you clearly mentioned that, you know, you being brought up in a traditional Brahmin family was one of the stepping stones towards your journey towards Christianity. So could you explain why it, is, it was so? See, when you are brought up in a very conservative family, very traditional family, very God-fearing family, mm. everything you do is centered around God. Mm. It is never I, me, myself, mine, but it is always God's will. Uh, let God decide. Mm. Let it happen according to God's will, that kind of thing. Mm. And this I used to hear a lot in my family. So when things went wrong, obviously I started searching my answers in the gods, mm. you know, I had known all my life. Yes. And when I did not find the answer, when it was such a small world and everything had a boundary around it and all my questions just bounced back on me, I started searching for the true God. Okay. So it is a, it, my family is very, very God fearing family, especially my parents' family. Mm. So that really helped me uh, get closer to Christ, I guess. Yeah. So, you know, now uh, just moving into your uh, film career, you being brought up in such a conservative Brahmin family, how did it all happen, you, you know, entering into the film industry? It was a big shock and surprise for many of my friends and family. Mm. Uh, because from my very young age, you know, as as young as I could remember in my life, I had always wanted to become a doctor and a gynecologist in that. Okay. And uh, I, everything was geared towards it. Mm. You 
know I concentrated in biology I concentrated in science and I used to uh, with a lot of grievances of course concentrate in mathematics and tortured all my teachers so uh, I, I started learning Bharatnatyam from very very young age from my five years old I guess so when I started learning Bharatanatyam, uh, obviously, you know, I loved dance. I just, I just fell in love with Bharatanatyam. Mm. And I started giving performances. When I reached around 11 or 12, uh, I was noticed by a lot of people because my father was working in Madras Race Club. Mm. And a lot of the film producers, film directors, they come there. And they were all my father's good friends. And my father was... Um, he kind of, you know, boasts me on and off. He's very sweet. So even if I take a, you know, left step instead of right, he says, wow, beautiful. You're very creative. <laughs> I just love you for this. He was like that. So he had all my photographs in this uh, vintage desk office, you know, under the glass. You have this huge, humongous table. And uh, he used to really showcase all our photographs, mine and my little brother's. Um, so one of the producers, I think they came and they said, oh, who is this? And he said, oh, that's my daughter. She's a Bharatanatyam dancer. And I never knew, you will not believe, people will not believe it. Till I was 11 years old, I did not know that my eyes were different. Mm. Because I was in such a family that even if you look at your face, more than it takes, you know, for you to put the bindi, my grandma used to say, oh, ladies who see their, themselves too much in their mirrors, they never prosper. Uh -huh. They never come up in life. And I was like, oh my God, then I need to be careful. So my grandma never lets us even stand in front of the mirror too much. Mm. Uh, so I never knew I had a different eye, eye color that is. And uh, so people started saying, oh, she looks a little bit like Zaira a little bit like Jaya Prada. Why can't she act in movies? So my father i think in his fanciest moment mm. uh, decided yeah why not you know it's it's not bad i have complete faith in my daughter that wherever she goes she's going to be a good girl and uh, that was my entry into film reason yeah reason to start acting in films yeah my father's trust okay yeah so you uh, you know you actually had a very successful film career so mm -hmm. where did you know marriage suddenly appear in your life how did it all happen? Marriage was there from my 11th year in the cards. So everything was like, you know, geared up towards good marriage, good children and good education. Okay. And my mom will start uh, uh, collecting jewelry for my marriage, mm. vessels for my marriage. You know, it's a big deal in Brahmin custom, okay. right? You yeah. have brass vessels, silver vessels, stainless steel, you know, that kind of thing. Mm. So always I knew that, okay, I have to get married one fine day. And my studies, the way I dress up, even that was controlled using marriage. Okay. You know, who will get married to you? You can't dress up like this. Who will get married to you? You don't know how to make a decent child. Okay. Who will get married to you if you wake up early in the, uh, not wake up early in the morning, morning. that kind of thing. So, um, when I turned 18, so my, my mom and my my mom especially, so she was like, okay, you're 18, you become a major, so now we have to get you married. And I was like, what? <laughs> Did you get me married? Yeah. Mama, this is tender age of 18. And she said, no, the tender age of 19, I got married. <laughs> so luckily an astrologer came and saved me in my plight. He told my mom, uh, don't get your daughter married before 23, otherwise she'll get divorced. That astrologer saved my life. Yeah. See. Otherwise, I would have been married uh, now for 22 years. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. So when did you meet? Yeah. So when did you meet Bharat, and how did it all happen? I met Bharat in one of a common friend's home, mm. and I met him during Navratri, the doll festival in South India. We mm. call it Golu. Mm. And it is a big deal in all the Brahmin families. So we go to different people's homes and we have a good collection of eatables. We have good collection of, you know, mirrors and this and that. And that is a, that is a wonderful opportunity for you to dress up in your best. Mm. So I went uh, to my friend's home. 
she invited me and uh, Bharat was also there so I know the girl and her husband mm. and the husband was working with Bharat Okay. So Bharat was also invited over there and then they both you know suddenly went this girl this lady and her husband suddenly went mm. Oh you're a brahmin he's a brahmin they are looking for a guy in your house they're looking for a girl in his house why don't you both get married and we were like what <laughs> and I had to look at him like this because he was 62 and he had to look at me like this because uh. I was 54 uh. I am 54 and um, so he was he went <laughs> getting married to this girl and I went uh, huh, getting married to this guy he, he doesn't look like Brahman he's slightly darkish you know all those things and then we got uh, talking and Bharat wanted to date me but uh, I said I can't date you either you like me you get married to me or we don't get married so my mom and dad and his mom and dad like you know they were there the very first week of us knowing each other um, and uh, yeah, so they fix, fixed our marriage, finalized and everything. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you know, just moving on, uh, Christina. So after you got married, you went through a very rough patch in your marriage, right? Where you know you had you had a lot of difficulties, and you even you know considered suicide a lot of times. Yes. So what really happened in your married life? What was going on? So my marriage was everybody's dream, mm. you know, everybody were waiting for me to elope and get married and bring the shame to my family that never happened. They thought I'll get married to some unknown guy that never happened. And they thought I'll get married to uh, a five foot, uh, you know, a five foot guy that never happened. And I got married into a fantastic family. My father-in-law is from Navy. Uh, my husband's family is also well known and well settled, very well educated person and he was also having good job in American Express. So everything was like a dream come true mm. and I got married at the right age and everything. Mm. I never knew that you know there was something in Bharat's life uh, which would create problems for me later. So there was this relative you know these days I don't want to say anything about her, I really want to skip that part but whether I like it or not she is a part and parcel of my testimony. Mm. So this is Bharat's first cousin, his aunt's daughter and uh, I believe she was interested in Bharat. Mm. She was a young widow and I really don't know why she did not have the guts to walk up to his family or walk up to him and tell him that look I'm a young widow I have one daughter and I want to get married to she did not do that mm. I guess uh, there were some talks saying that Bharat is not getting married he's just having girlfriends in tens and thousands and we need to somehow get him settled and I believe his father and his sister had a talk of getting these two married which my husband did not know and my mother-in-law Bharat being the only son, uh, she said, no, I, I really want to wait on this. Um, she is same age as Bharat and she is a widow and why don't we just sit on it for a little while and then I happened. Okay. I met Bharat and Bharat liked me and I liked Bharat and we were gung-ho about each other, we got married. Mm. I think this slightly miffed or greatly disappointed this lady. Mm. I don't blame her at all. She could have any time walked up to me and said, you know, hey, look, I was interested in this guy. Not that I would have said, okay, you get married to him. I wouldn't have necessarily said that. <laughs> but she resolved into something which cannot be seen or heard or it can only be felt. She resolved into doing something in a cult. Mm. She resolved in doing this black magic thing that even before we got married, after our engagement, we would be separated. Mm. And my family is a family. We never knew anything about these things. Mm. We go to temples, we worship, and that is about it. Astrology was a part of a Brahmin culture and custom. But more than that, we never used to know anything about occult. 
so this girl you know hailing from a part of kerala uh, i think she knew lot of these black magicians who would do these things and she had everything she needed to do that mm. you need to have the victim's photograph or hair or a piece of cloth or something belonging to me which she had a very easy access to so when she did this black magic i think it was in stages but she thought that you know okay they have just got engaged so you know we can break it up easily and that didn't happen we had some misunderstanding and that didn't happen so we went ahead and got married and then immediately i got pregnant so this girl should have stopped there any any nice girl any girl with some humanity in her should have stopped there you know me carrying my my first son she went ahead and did that and i used to feel depressed for no reason i used to feel sad for no reason and i really felt completely spooked out for no reason and we were in washington dc at that time uh, my husband got a wonderful job in uh, washington dc and so i followed suit you know you don't let a brown smart handsome guy alone <laughs> so i said i'm come you 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 can't be very happy i'm coming with you yeah so i went there and i used to feel spooked out like you know i can't sleep well in the nights and i used to have nightmares and i used to be depressed for no reason and i used to sit and cry for days together i felt sick i had lot of pain in my cervical area i had cervical spondylitis then the pain became worse then it became cervical spondylosis the second stage and they said that they have to do an operation and precisely at that time i got pregnant with our second child okay and had to abort the child because the doctors felt my backbone cannot take any weight oh okay and uh, i also had a condition called lumbar degeneration my lumbar my spinal cord was degenerating okay of these things and abortion whether people realize it today or not is a very big catastrophic step to their own ruin they may not realize it but what they are doing is they are going against this one true god whether you are a hindu or you are a muslim or you are a christian you are a practicing christian or non practicing christian it does not matter that is a catastrophe anybody can have in their life which they should avoid by all means mm. the minute you go against god's will mm. thou shall not kill the minute you go against god's will it's like opening your door wide to satanic forces mm. people don't like to be to be told uh, about satan today they say satan does not exist they say oh there is no evil when god is all good why there should be evil mm. so how would you explain such kind of mentality when you don't know god i did not know christ then so me and bharat we did not know we were doing something wrong mm. so this kind of you know completely took me to the next level of depression and i thought okay i'm not going to be in the us you know us life can be pretty lonely at times mm. went back to india and there it became very severe and i would go to the doctor i went to my psychiatrist i went to a psychologist mm. and nobody could find any fault in fact my very best friend ravi samuel he is a psychologist he always said manju i cannot believe that you are depressed <laughs> you know you are like talking like per minute some 10000 sentences it's even difficult for us to follow what you are talking and you are saying that you are depressed and i said ravi i don't know you know i don't feel good about lot of things and then finally i decided okay something is wrong with bharat's family because you know i sat down thought about it since the day i got engaged all my problems started mm. health depression and uh, you know lot of uh, conflicts in your mind whether i'm doing the right thing or not the logically i was doing the right thing something did not fall into place mm. and you don't know about these occult or anything you know so according to the horoscope everything is good astrologers say this is fantastic thing and you don't know what is happening so i decided i'm not going to stay in this marriage there is something surely wrong with this marriage exactly what that girl wanted me to think mm. and i went and spoke to my husband i said bharat i really love you mm. i really do 
I know you love me, and I I really want to stay in this marriage, but without a marriage. And Bharat was like, what What are you talking? I think you you need to go and sleep for some time. You you're just blabbering something. And I said no. Mm. You know when I really go back. it all started precisely after our engagement so i think something is not right with your family mm. and we tried to figure out whether there is any curse or something because brahmins are big believers in curse and uh, we believe all our ancestors should die in a nice way should be uh, given a proper Total burial not burial we we burn the bodies we, yeah okay so there are 13 days of things which you need to do and everything so we went back to all those things we checked all the points everything was fine and we did not know what was happening then i said okay listen i know that in kerala people because we were like part keralites right mm-hmm. i mean my grandma is yeah. from kottayam my husband is from palakkad trithala So I said there should be something somewhere lodged which we don't know. Why don't we try that? And Bharat is not a big believer in all these things. He said okay. So we called uh, an astrologer. They draw a chart in the ground and they do something with the seashells. We call it Kavadi Josiam. So we called this guy and he came home from Kerala to see us. And um, he said uh, Mohini, somebody has done some black magic to you. Mm. that was the first time i'm even hearing this you know mm. and i'm like okay you want some extra money you you go ahead and ask me don't don't tell me all these things he said no and all my calculations were right he said it's been 5 years since they did this to me and they have topped it up with worst possible spells and curses and he said either they want you to get mad or they want you to kill yourself to be completely out of bharat's life mm. and they zeroed in who it could be they said that any relative of yours uh, any sister cousin of bharat's could have done this and i did not know why they would do this because i was very nice to this girl we would often call this girl home and uh, we would uh, entertain her family mm. never did i know that this girl has got such a malice in her heart mm. and uh, so we just sat on it for a little while i was very adamant that i'm not going to get into all this belief and customs and, and they said oh we need to do this particular worship in the midnight and i said okay this is even more spooky you know than i thought i'm not doing all those things if there is a god let that god save me mm. and that was the next step i took towards understanding what is occult mm. and from there it was like christ placed everything in my pathway for me to understand where am i and where i have to go where i have to be with whom i have to be and when i understood what occult was and that occult is practiced practiced only by and in two religions mm. hinduism and islamism mm. in christianity you cannot do anything anything even remotely wrong using the bible mm. even if you go and say lord god this guy this enemy blah 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 god is only going to bless him because of the word of god mm. it's a lie and it's powerful and it is the truth mm. but with the other things there are ways and means you could slightly twist and turn certain things and there are ways and means to show your anger towards your enemy in a different way mm. and she had resolved to do something like that when there are 10000 good things about every religion people choose the the uh, 20 which is not part of this 10000 you can't go and stop them you can't really make them understand that they are ruining even their lives so and it was when we were, yeah thank you sorry No, when we knew that this was it, you know, it furthered my search more for God. Mm. It furthered my search more for God, and uh, interestingly enough, uh, at that point, uh, I had a dream of Christ. Wow. And from there, you know, everything everything started to open up, 
the doors which should be opened in my life opened and the doors which should be closed in my life closed i actually know about the dream which you are saying it was a, such a wonderful dream if you could you know explain it uh, in detail i think it will be very interesting for all of us to know in my sleep i saw this beautiful beautiful dream which changed my life you know when jesus wants to converse with you there is clarity in it mm. and in fact that is one way you find you bear your dreams or your prophecies or your visions or your inner locutions are from mm. when jesus gives you something it is crystal clear mm. it is not a or b or c it's not like that it is one mm. when the enemy gives you something you will be all confused mm. you will there won't be any clarity in it so in this dream i was standing in a it is not even an island it is just a small piece of land mm. so if i take two steps to my right or left it was water mm. or front or back it was water mm. so just that small piece of land i was standing in and i was completely marooned nobody i i am not having my family my friends my husband my son my older son at that time he was around 4 uh, um uh, and i'm just standing and i'm looking at the water and i'm thinking this is karma so this is how karma suddenly all of a sudden topples a human being's life takes away you know all the happiness mm. gives you this unexpected unwanted turn then i remember thinking if someone is going to save me from this death unexpected death mm. that person or that male or female version will be my god mm. and the minute i thought this just diagonally opposite you know it was not exactly opposite like this or like this diagonally opposite i saw this handsome man filled with light mm. standing there the minute i saw him i could feel everything you know the comforting presence uh uh i could instantly take him as my confidant mm. you know i could just open out i felt i could open out anything to him that kind of confidence i was able to have in my heart mm. and there was light mm. all of him in him within him through him that kind of thing and i remember just looking at him and thinking uh because the minute i looked up to him he gave me a all knowing smile mm. an all knowing smile and the smile was so reassuring at the same time i understood that he is a safe person he is someone i can trust oh there is so much of love from him oh he knows what i thought everything at once mm. he created my brains i guess he knew how to operate it you know well and uh, he he instantly took over my heart mm. i was felt at that precise moment i was swept off my feet by my heavenly bridegroom and uh, i was just looking at him and thinking is he going to save me mm. oh if he's save me then then he is my god mm. the minute i said that again there was this all knowing handsome calm peaceful loving smile and uh, he immediately turned and looked towards another human being only then i even noticed that there is another human being in the picture mm. and uh, he was looking like a tribal guy you know nothing compared to our lord mm. he was i think he should concentrate more on his dressing <laughs> and kem hair and untrimmed beard and maybe next time when i see him i would i would take him for shopping yeah um he was standing there and our lord looked at him pointed out me with his left hand and with his right hand he was pointing out something beyond this man mm. that is when i noticed a very funny looking structure floating in the water mm. it is not like the usual regular boat or ship which we see these days it was floating in the water and i remember our lord saying something to him or maybe he didn't even say something even even the other guy understood just like how i understood mm. and uh, smiling and i remember this guy just turning and immediately i thought is he going to save me 
is he going to save me oh then he will be my god and my little son came and woke me up my my son at that time was 4 and anirudh came and woke me up and he is quite uh, uh, he has specialized training in how to wake me up in you know during specs so you know that person who was you know standing there with the boat later on you came to know that it was noah yes noah okay and, and no- that was noah's son and there was something you know? which interesting which you say that you know jesus said you should take her also in the boat and save her that's very Amen. very beautiful yeah okay. completely understood that as i was reading the bible on my later days yeah I, when i came to the noah's ark i just stopped and i cried and cried and cried thinking how this almighty all powerful god would humble himself and come in a dream of a hindu brahmin who neither have any had any interest in knowing him nor had any ways and means of knowing him so he had planned everything in a such beautiful way because every soul is important to him bible says that you know i will go after that one lost sheep yeah till i get that back to my barn in my safety i will not sleep and he did not sleep he is not sleeping our lord never sleeps or slumbers so every lost sheep has got a chance and i wish and pray that they would be given the grace and means our lord gave me to be saved and to feel safe to come into his care to come into his born you know not once ha- have i been able to recount this dream without having tears in my eyes because that is the day i was born truly born truly started living and that is possible only by this jesus the christ whom we are called after christians yeah so it was it was amazing it was just it was just too amazing yeah and just to continue with your story so the deliverance process that you had through all this you know evil affliction was a process you said right so how did it happen it was a very big process um deliverance is i would like to word it this way in my opinion mm. deliverance starts with oneself deliverance starts with oneself are you ready to take that big step but actually a small step the first step towards christ and say lord you are my savior i am fallen i am fallen i am ready to accept you agree with all your terms and conditions as a savior mm. you are my savior you are my redeemer mm. i am i am ready to do that 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 is the first step we all need to take mm. and for this no human being has the grace or the ability to do so they need the grace of the almighty god mm. unless and until the father wills you cannot come to me mm. i think father in his heart full of overwhelming love willed that i will come across his son mm. my heavenly bride and so it started first within myself mm. uh, uh, i had to say that jesus will you please help me out of the situation mm. i need to sleep i need to eat i need to live my life normally mm. uh, and at that time i was too much into sleeping pills mm. because i couldn't sleep and my husband first said you know why don't you have a glass of wine you would be able to sleep i would have two three goblets of wine and i wouldn't sleep mm. and today i can look back and say that was alcoholism mm. because a girl who couldn't even take a sip of wine was taking three goblets of wine was like is too much for me to imagine right now mm. and uh, i was going through all these things in and out of hospitals in and out of this blood test and uh, that test and all those things and in and out of fights in and out of uh, courts all those things jesus came in the right time so the minute i said lord please tell me how i can get rid of all these things he slowly took me towards baptism mm. so unless and until we accept jesus in his in his wholesomeness mm. how can we be wholesome mm. so i was able to understand that it is not jesus is not a medicine jesus is our oxygen the very breath we take mm. 
that is Jesus. You need to breathe for you to be alive and for you to take some medication, right? He is our life. Mm. And he is our main thing. He is a mainstream guy. Mm. He is not like, you can't sideline Jesus and say, I am living. No, you will not live if you sideline Jesus. Mm. I was able to understand that in a very different way. Uh, not so clearly as I talk, but I know that, you know, I had to give more space for Jesus in my life. So I started, people would call me to AG Assembly, people would call me to CSI, and they were all introduced by my husband's friend, Mark Alexander, who belonged to a CSI church. And he was also into too many things, you know, I felt too many pastors walking in and out of his office and too many things, uh, too many channels of this one same living God. Um, so he would take me to all these places and I ended up getting more confused. Mm. That is one reason I understand when I look at people going to this retreat, that talk, this deliverance ministry, that healing mass and nothing happens to them because it has to start from within. Mm. And then the Lord slowly started showing me, speaking to me th through Bible, mm. speaking to me through the CSI church I was attending. So wherever we are today, God is so powerful. Can, Jesus is so loving. He can direct you towards the proper path. Mm. If I would have understood that wrongly at that time or being adamant in understanding wrongly, I would have still sat in the CSA church and not got healed or feel this complete as I feel today. Mm. So you have to just let go. So the deliverance starts from within. Mm. And then slowly the other things started taking place. I went to Porta. I came to know about this one, the only one true Catholic Church. There is no other true faith than the Catholic faith. And you can't be more closer to God if you are not in the Catholic Church. Mm. And I'm ready to give my life for this. Mm. If somebody says, I'm going to shoot you because you said this, I would say, sure. But please make sure my course is opened. <laughs> I'm going to die. <laughs> Um, so um, it started like that and I got baptized I was still battling all these demons mm. and uh, I used to constantly sit and cry to the Lord I used to read the Bible I used to go to the mass in the morning and I used to go and sit in adoration in the evening without knowing the power or the uh, God in his entirety in the Blessed Sacrament but I was so attracted towards Blessed Sacrament, I started going and sitting there. I wouldn't know what to pray. I will just look at him and he look at, looks at me. Yeah. We staring at each other. And uh, I started getting, I started drawing immense peace from just looking at him. Yeah. You know, my peace I give you. It is his peace. If he is not there, of course you will not have peace. And we are not used to just stick with the Word of God. The Word of God was made into flesh and dwelt among us. Yeah. You can't stay in the first stage and first category and expect the wholesomeness of Christianity. Yes. You need to move forward. You need to come to the wholesomeness of Christianity, which is offered only in the Catholic Church, mm. where the Lord's body and blood is there. The unfortunate part is the Satanists seem to know this in a much more deeper way, truer way than the Christians. That's the very sad part. Um, so when I started coming towards Catholic Church, the Lord was speaking to me loud and clear. Another thing I always tell people, I was a fresh person. I was a new person for everything, you know, in Catholic Church and Christianity. If God spoke to me, God is definitely speaking to everybody. Maybe you are closing your ears. You're not ready to listen. You are refusing to listen. You are adamantly looking at a human being, this pastor and that pastor of these different churches and not at the Lord. Mm. What does St. Paul say? Boast in the cross. That is what we do. That is why even today, even, even though our Lord is resurrected and we are all part of resurrected Christ, we are boasting on the cross. That is why the crucifix is the center of the altar, our worship, our belief, our faith. Before we resurrect, we have to die. People completely miss that part. That is why the crucifix is the center. Mm. And the Lord pointed out all these things to me. And he said, this is where I want you to be. And he spoke to me through another dream. 
where in my pre-kindergarten I studied in Alpha Matriculation in Chennai and uh, just that one year I studied there it was too far away from home so I had to shift to school um, I acted as Mother Mary mm. you know in that small little age and I it was so crystal clear you know dark and skinny Joseph and I was having this you know blue stiff cotton sari draped around my head and uh, my late grandpa my my sweet hero you know he is he was a fantastic guy in my life and he came to pick me up my father's father he came to pick me up and I was able to see everything and everything gelled and I knew exactly what the Lord was trying to tell me I chose you back then wow. you did not know me but I knew you mm-hmm. I called you by name when you were in your mother's womb mm. and <clears throat> excuse me people miss this wonderful God and they search God in human beings they, they cannot find it mm. they have to come to their roots mm. the roots is the Catholic Church they have to come back here to find this one true living God then all my deliverance started mm. the Lord would direct will speak to me through the Bible he asked me to throw away the idols I did and I could never wear my Hindu Mangal Sutra mm. because they had done precisely against my marriage and it was through this Hinduism thing mm. I was not able to wear my Mangal Sutra and one fine day God said you will go and throw all your golden and silver idols and you will not have any more idols mm. in your house you will not worship mm. in them but you worship me mm. in Mount Zion mm. and I read this I was able to crystal clearly understand you know, what mm. is God telling me I took away all the idols I changed my Mangal Sutra into a Christian Mangal Sutra what design there are some 10,000 designs today for a Christian wedding chain right that was another confusion I was like oh my god what do I do what cross is this there is a cross in the Mangal Sutra is this the Lord's cross or the right side uh, you know the thief's cross left side thief's cross I wouldn't know mm. I was like this is cross symbolized there is there is no Jesus in the cross mm. and then God said okay this is the design of your wedding chain and from your generation onwards people will have this as a sign that they belong to me so I designed there I gave it to that lady and that's how my wedding was my wedding chain was made mm. but still I was going through divorce I did not know oh. you are asking me to design a wedding chain I'm going through divorce Lord what is happening the Lord said hang on be still and know that I'm God mm. what is being still Lord be still don't waver don't change don't argue mm. don't doubt mm. don't go anywhere stand exactly there be mm. still in your faith mm. and know I'm God mm. okay I'm trying <laughs> keep trying but yeah so it was beautiful how he led me so if he could lead a completely new person an oblivious person to his greatness to his mercy to his power to his authority he can definitely lead everybody every born Catholic every born Christian back to this Catholic Church I think people are adamant you know you were as, t- as you said you were still going through this uh, divorce with uh, Bharat so finally how did it you know all come through how did the consensus happen and how did he accept or you accepted each other through the Catholic Church okay. again only through this one one single truth alive in this world mm. um, I started sharing my testimony I will never tell people my problems I will never tell people what I'm going through I will always tell the Lord Lord it is between you and me I'm not opening out to anybody mm. you are living mm. so you can you can I'm sure you can lead me through all these things so I would only open out to the Lord mm. I will not open out to anybody mm. but I would always go and share my conversion story and the second year after I got converted I got healed of my arthritis and my spondylosis mm. in port mm. in consecutive masses mm. Holy Masses. The first day Holy Mass, I'm sorry. 
the first day of the holy mass i was healed of uh, uh, arthritis the second day of the holy mass i was healed of cervical spondylosis mm. and both the time the michael paypalli was the celebrant he did not know me personally i did not know him personally i had not given the name mohini in the list i had given christina so that people will not know it was me but god knows me god is god was very precise so i would share this healing story and my conversion story everywhere mm. so whenever people came and requested me you know sister we are having we are you know all the nurses we are meeting together can you come and share your story sure i'm free i'll come so wherever they called me it was such a joy to speak about jesus and uh, i firmly believe the more you share jesus the more he will become yeah. in you yes and, yeah whether they ask me or not i will go and show my rosary see i'm wearing rosary <laughs> uh, why i'm wearing rosary because i'm a catholic you know how i became a catholic and then the whole story yeah so i was sharing my testimonies and i was sharing my testimony one fine day and i started slowly giving talks mm. so fathers would come and ask me christina you are here this evening yesterday you shared the testimony will you be able to talk about god's mercy today okay i'll talk anyway i don't know anything i'm going to go sit in front of the blessed sacrament he is going to tell me what i should talk and i'm going to talk because i really truly believed he is living mm. even though i was new and he would talk to me i would take notes and so i was very busy sharing the word of god and uh, this priest father thomas ambatukuril he is a good brother to me good good elder brother to me though he will not agree that he is my elder brother <laughs> so uh, he, he was talking to me and he said so christina what's happening to your marriage and i was like little surprised that he was asking me on the way uh, for me to go and talk and uh, i said father there's no way i could live with him yeah. he is not agreeing you know during that period i had a talk with bharat i said i can't divorce you because bible says i can't divorce you jesus says i can't divorce you and bharat was like what <laughs> okay i think this time i want to divorce you because this is not working out you can't just keep changing your mind about me like this so it, he's a man indian man and his ego was hurt so i discussed all these things with father thomas mm. and i said there's no way i could live with him he's very adamant and he stopped walking turned and looked at me he said when jesus has said i am the way how can you say there is no way mm. then you're not believing in jesus and i was completely stunned mm. and uh, i didn't know what to do say and uh, i said so acha what do you want me to do so what do you think i should be doing surrender your marriage to the lord and after the talk was over i went to the blessed sacrament and i asked the lord lord what is what is surrendering isn't all the things in my life already yours he said no you need to surrender a surrendering a thing means you cannot act on it mm. i am the only person acting on it and believe me it's the most difficult thing to do yeah and after i surrendered bharat will yell at me bharat will get angry at me bharat's father will get angry at me and bharat will stop talking all these things will happen and i'll be like my god i wish i could yell at him and the lord will say no zip up christina and go and sit down and i was like lord seriously lord you said you will not let me be ashamed you are not ashamed you both are one body you're not ashamed because your husband shouted at you go and sit down and i started doing that and april 24th morning we were to be given the divorce granted the divorce april 23rd night 10:30 11 o'clock i'm kneeling down and i'm crying to the lord lord what what else and in between there were two priests who offered me to come and live in their retreat center do full time ministry so that i will be safe i will not be available for people to do their guest works and write rumors and all those things and they said we will do everything for you we will even educate your child um so that was i had to let go of that ego also no air condition 8 by 10 room 
small little attached toilet that is it this is going to be my home but this is god's house and i'm safe so i had to let go of that ego and say yes father if something like that happens i would like to come and stay in the retreat center so when i let go of everything god gave me doubly more Mm. So Bharat walks in at 11:30 in the night to the bedroom. He watches TV in the other room in India, and he said, "I'm going to take back the divorce." Mm. What you said is very true. I think we should give this another shot. This is something too beautiful for us to let go. So he called the lawyer right in front of me. Unfortunately, the lawyer was a Catholic Christian converted into Hinduism. I guess mm. she was encouraging my husband to divorce me. Mm. unbelievable you know, the works of the enemy so bharat said no i'm not doing that and uh, i'm not divorcing my wife but thank you so much for your concern and he kept the phone and within 4 months i conceived my second child mm. and from there there was no turning back so many people come and ask me this marriage is is too bad to be repaired you know it's cracked it's broken and i always say even if it is beyond salvation there is a savior to save your marriage there is nothing which he cannot do you have to allow him to do and you have to be still and know that he is god and when i say he is god he is capable of everything he can even bring the dead back if they are not buried as yet mm. he is capable of doing it mm. and today my marriage is very satisfying very happy we are like friends and people don't believe that we went till divorcing each other and we have come back to this and it is possible only because of j e s u s <laughs> so you know you started off in a conservative traditional brahmin family and today you have attained the fullness of faith in the catholic church mm-hmm. and uh, you know uh, can you just share about the catholic lifestyle that you live in uh, what you know seattle So I was living in Arkansas before I moved in here and it was after 4 years of my catholic life. Mm. And I was busy ministering there and I just loved every moment of talking about the Lord and everything and then I got uh, pregnant when I was 8 and a half months pregnant Bharat uh, got a transfer. Mm. So we moved to Arkansas and then we came here. Mm. When I came to Seattle I was all ready to go go back home. I always wanted to settle only in India. I never wanted to be anywhere else other than India, other than Chennai. Yeah. I'm a Chennai, you know, true Chennai. Um but when we were praying, the Lord would always say like I'm sending Abraham, I'm sending you. And I'll be like, "Oh God, can you please slightly change? <laughs> can you please talk about someone who went back home?" You know, and the Lord was like, "No, I have my plans for you, not for your evil, but for your good." So I it became clear that okay I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. So um then I started going to daily mass. You know, Adu started growing up and when he started going to school, I started going to my daily mass and that is the best thing that has ever happened to me. In Chennai I I went to daily mass when I was pregnant with him and that is why Advait was born today. Mm. Advait is alive today only because of the lord's body and blood mm. because i had so much of complications in my pregnancy mm. when i moved here my mom was not there my grandma was not there my friends was not there it was jesus me and mother mary the whole day so i would go to the uh, church i would receive the body and blood of christ i would come back and i would sit and i would wonder what can i do and then i would order books about saints Uh, books about the eucharistic miracles and everything and i would read them and oh my god i s- really started to realize i am nowhere into this beautiful catholicism as yet mm. even after 5 years of my baptism i had to really alter a lot of things i had to keep quiet when i really want to yell i had to bite my tongue when my opinion was not good I had to back off when I had I had to change something because it was not up to what I wanted it to be. All these things the my big brothers, your big brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, St Catherine of Siena to St Rita to St Teresa of Avila, St Anthony, 
they all started speaking to me through their biographies yeah and uh, now the gifts i ask the lord is not a bmw or um, i do ask bmw but that's not the only thing um, but i do ask lord i want to ex- experience levitation lord what is this bilocation that sounds very interesting my brother anthony did my brother benedict did my brother francis did oh no 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 francis of assisi did not have uh, bilocation sen padre pio hai yeah padre pio had so they all became the family members i did not have here mm. anthony was my anna padre pio was my tata and benedict was my big brother and francis anna was my big brother katrina kal fonzama chavracha all these people became so close to me that i could depend on them for anything you know chavracha i'm going to have bath please make sure adu is sleeping okay or uh, katrina ma i sincerely don't know what i'm cooking let it turn out to be some palatable dish you know something like that so i would include them in everything and my life started becoming more fruitful the days i prayed over my dish that is the tastiest dish i have ever cooked the days i asked chavracha to manage my sleeping child was the day my my child slept very well his nap was fantastic and i already loved the concept of saints and the saints but when i came to seattle is when i became closer to god you become closer to god it is a cause and effect thing yeah, you know, yeah. cause and effect thing. you become closer to jesus you will become closer to saints you will become closer yeah. to saints you will automatically be closer to jesus you know the minute you say oh i don't like saints then you also inside without you realizing you're saying oh i don't like jesus mm. you cannot just love this and hate the other because they are all one and the same if we are all one body in christ of course they are one in you they are one in jesus you are all one communion of saints so i started realizing so today i think i'm still learning because catholicism is just beautiful and vast i'm still learning but whatever i am learning this handsome heavenly bridegroom of mine is sweeping me off my feet every day with every saint i come across he's sweeping me off my feet the possibilities are endless what we can do in the name of this one mighty god mm. yeah so thank you so much christian i